Alrighty, so I think we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, my name is Alex Dami. I'm an intern with the Planning and Evaluation Division at the Human Services Department. Um, and today's meeting is going to be recorded. Um, so yes, welcome everyone. Um, thank you for showing up today um, and taking the first steps to Learning Reviewer, our new online portal. Um, and I just want to acknowledge that this is a new portal. Um, it's going to be new for you as applicants. It's definitely been new for us at the county, um, and it's also going to be new for our future review panelists. So we're all trying to figure this out together. Um, and we're really hopeful that um, using reviewer is going to make the process better for every person involved. Um, but with a new process, it's going to take some patience and some adjustments. Um, and I just think it's great that you all are taking the first step to understanding reviewer by attending today's training. And I encourage you all to really take some time after today's training to go through Reviewer, get acquainted with it, get comfortable with it um, well in advance of that February 4th deadline uh, for this RFP. And today you may have some questions as we go along. Um, you are welcome to put them in the chat. Uh, I'll open it up for questions at the end and due to kind of the nature of my presentation, I won't have access to the chat. So. Um, I'll definitely though scroll through it at the end if there's anything that is um, needs to be addressed right away. Um, Nicole Young and Nicole Lesman will, will voice it out to us. Um, and really though, the types of questions that I'll be able to answer today will really center around reviewer um, and not the RFP or the application itself. And so if you do have questions that come up during today's training, feel free, you're gonna to wanna to send them to our core funding at santacruzcounty.us. And I'm gonna go ahead and put that in the chat right now. But that is the best place um, to send all of those types of questions. So I know it can be frustrating when you ask a question and the person can't respond um, in that moment, but I promise you that we will get to it if you email it to that core funding at santacruzcounty.us. All right, so today we are going to cover how to access the application, how to create an account on Reviewer, how to actually navigate Reviewer, and how to submit multiple applications. I'm gonna go ahead and start sharing my screen. All right, is everybody seeing my screen so far? All right, I see a thumbs up. All right, so um, I am a big Googler, I guess Microsoft finger. Um, and so the first thing I do is I just Google Human Services Department, Santa Cruz County and find our web page. And from here, you'll be able to click either core investments funding opportunities in this yellow box. You can also navigate to the home screen, click funding opportunities, request for proposals, and then core investments. So two different ways to get to this web page hub. And this really is the hub. It has all of the information on the RFP, and we won't be going over every aspect of this web page today, um, but I do really encourage you all to take the time to review it. Um, there's a lot of really important information here um, that will help guide you through this application. So as I'm scrolling down, um, there's a couple of things that I do wanna point out. So underneath this section, how do I apply? is where you're gonna find the actual link to get you to the portal. And so it says to complete your application online, the application portal is available here. Um, and before I click on there, I just wanna point out two additional pieces. So the first one is our budget forms. Um, and within the reviewer application, it is gonna ask you to upload um, these budget forms. These are Excel documents that you can download and you can work on it before you even get into Reviewer um, and have it all ready to go when they're asking you to submit it. And so you'll see there's one for the single agency budget worksheet as well as collaborative budget worksheet. And then in addition to the budget forms, we have these optional application forms. I know a lot of the times when I have been um, doing grants, I have created my own little document with all the questions and all the character counts. Um, and shared it with my coworkers and my team uh, so that we have kind of a working document. And so that's what we created here for you all. We have them by um, the tiers of applications, so small, medium, large, and targeted impact applications. Um, and you can throw those into 
um, a Google Doc or just open up in Word, um, but they're really meant as a tool to help you all um, see all of the questions in one space for each type of tier. And especially if you're working with um, applying for multiple applications, that can also be very helpful um, to kind of organize yourself. All right, so now I'm gonna scroll back up just a little bit and we are going to open the actual application portal. All right, so this is our application portal. And as you can see, there's a little bit of information here. Um, so we have a bit of a description. And if you've read through the RFP, this is gonna look very similar. It's essentially the same exact thing that is under the summary component of the RFP. Um, so you've just got a bit of information that you can review and it's always good to review things twice, three times. I know it takes a long time for some of this stuff to sink in, um, especially if you're just starting with this process, um, which I assume a lot of you are. Um, and then if this is your very first time coming to a reviewer, you most likely are going to need to create an account and apply. So you'll just select that box. Oops. Try that again. There we go. So it's gonna take you to this page and you're gonna enter in some really basic information, your email address, you're gonna select the password and your first and last name and hit submit. And once you do that, it's gonna automatically take you into the application. And now some of you may be having multiple people working on this application um, and that is totally okay. But what I do recommend is that you create one account and you share that information. Um, and even if you're not gonna have multiple people working on the application, it's always a good idea to have multiple people that know the password and the email address that are associated with it, um, just in case something last minute comes up and that person isn't available. Um, so definitely share, share that information um, with your team. So I do have an account, so I'm gonna go ahead and log in. And it takes you to this page. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in my email account and then my password. And sometimes we forget our passwords or we mistype them. And so when that happens, it's just gonna give you this invalid username or password. Please try again. Um, if you like me sometimes forget your password because we have way too many of them, there is this nifty little button down here that says forget password or forgot password. You can click on it and it's gonna allow you to um, uh, get an email, it's gonna send it to you um, and you'll be able to reset that password. So thankfully I do remember my password today. So we're gonna go ahead and log in. And the first thing that you are gonna see is the summary and contact information page. So this is a um, multiple page application. Um, and I'm just gonna scroll to the bottom real quick so that you can see that at the very bottom of this page is a next button. And so that's how you're gonna see every single page of the application is by just clicking next through each page. Um, and I know that this can be an overwhelming process, especially as we go through and we see how many text boxes there are and places where you have to input information. Um, and Nicole Lezen actually shared this with me as kind of a nice way to reframe it is that really this is kind of like a checklist. And so you have all these boxes here so that you can see where the information is needed. You're not gonna have um, as many opportunities to forget to put something in because it's just all laid out for you. So I don't know if that's helpful to you all, um, but it was helpful for me to, to think through um, how an application can be viewed, so. All right, so every page is going to be set up pretty similarly. Um, every page has a title um, or a header. Summary and contact information is this page's header. And then below it is going to be a blurb. And the blurbs are really just to help you, to orient you to what's being asked of you in this section, um, kind of like a primer. Uh, and it'll also point to where additional information can be found in the RFP, which can be super helpful as well. And then we come to our first question, which is what award tier does this proposal fall into? And you'll notice that there's this little asterisk at the end of the question. And that means that that question is mandatory. Um, so if we 
were to leave this question blank um, and we were trying to navigate to the next page, we would get one of those pesky kind of error messages that would say, oh, you've missed something, you need to go back um, and input more information. So it's helpful in the sense that you're not gonna forget to input any of um, your information, uh, but it can make it a little bit difficult to navigate through reviewer. Um, so definitely that's when some of my patients has come in um, of, of going through this, this process. Um, so this first question though is a selection question and you'll notice that you can only select one option, um, whether it be small, medium, large, or targeted impact. And this question in particular is super important because all of the tiers are slightly different. Um, and so based off of your selection here, the rest of the application is going to populate um, the questions that are relevant to your tier. So for today's purpose, I'm just gonna focus on the small, um, but feel free when you're going back through reviewer um, to test through all of the different tiers, see how it looks and how it feels. Um, and also know, like I stated earlier on our webpage, we do have those optional application kind of worksheets that list out all of the questions by tier as well. So the next question that we have is a text box. So again, we have the question here, briefly summarize your proposal in three sentences or less. And below it, we have a character count. So if I'm actually in this box, you'll see that this question has a 400 character count. And as I start to add in characters, that character count goes down. And if we play around with it and I start to add spaces, you'll also know that the character count starts to go down. So these character counts do include actual characters as well as spaces, which is something um, to be mindful of, especially if you're working in those other documents and you're calculating your character count in them that you're gonna wanna look at the ones that include spaces. And then another thing that I find super helpful um, is that you can actually close um, or make smaller these text boxes as well as expand them um, by pulling the right hand corner down here. There's two little lines there um, and that allows you to um, expand or make smaller. And then we kind of come to some other text boxes. These ones are a little bit um, smaller. They are um, just asking for some basic information and you'll notice that some of these questions don't have asterisks, like website, for example, doesn't have an asterisk. So if you don't have a website, you don't need to put it in. Um, and same thing here for program address. If it's the same address that you're putting up here, you don't need to input that either. I'm just gonna go ahead and scroll down. Um, and now we come to another type of question. Um, so similarly to that first question, uh, select the service category that best describes your proposal. This is also a selection question. Um, but what's interesting about this one is that depending on your answer to this first question, the second question is gonna change a bit. So if we have health selected right now, you'll notice that all of the options here are all health related. We have substance use disorders, mental health and mental disorders, um, and so on. But if I change that and I click education, now all of those options change. Um, so now I have ones that are around childcare and early childhood education, literacy, and so on. Um, and you'll also notice that there's an other box down here. And so when I click that, a little text box comes in and I get to describe what my other is. So that is that question. Um, so now we're gonna navigate to the next page of the application. All right, so um, before we move on, I do just wanna show you that you can also move backwards um, by hitting the back button, which will take us back to the summary and contact information. And those back and next bu buttons show up on every single page. And let's say filling out the summary and contact information was enough for you today um, and you need a break, you can always save and log out. And this is not going to um, submit your application. It's simply going to just save it and then you'll be able to log back in. So you'll notice this additional box opens up here where it says click here to save and log out of this form. This will not submit your form. So I'm gonna hit the okay button and it's gonna take us back to that original landing page that we were on when we first um, 
when we first came to the portal. So I'm just gonna log back in real quick. All right, and then you'll also notice that all of my text um, was saved. So that um, is super helpful. Um, and I don't think I mentioned this before, but as you're navigating through the portal, if you do just want to practice navigating through it, you can add random numbers, you can add random text. Um, it does not need to be, um, you know, your, your full answers quite yet. So I do recommend that you go through and you just add some stuff here and there so that you can navigate through to the next section. All right, so this page um, is going to be asking you about whether or not you are a single agency or a collaborative proposal applying um, for this RFP. So you can notice I have single agency selected currently, um, but if I was a collaborative proposal, something fun happens, you get another question. Um, so it's gonna ask me how many partnering agencies are there? And when I go to the please select box, a drop down menu appears and I have um, the option to select up to eight partnering agencies. Um, if you have more agencies that you're partnering with than eight, that's totally okay. Um, we just recommend that you send us an email to that core funding at santacruzcounty.us email address and we can work with you to increase that number so that we can capture all of the amazing agencies that are part of your collaborative. Um, so let's say I was just working with one other agency. So if I clicked one, only one space would pop up here for me to enter their information. But if I was working with, let's say three, now I have three spaces that open up. Um, so how, whatever, um, you know, however many types of agencies um, you are partnering with, I guess not types, just agencies you're partnering with, um, you are going to want to select and fill out the information. Um, but for today's purpose, I'm gonna go ahead and continue as a single agency. All right, so now we get to our next page of the application. And this is where a lot more of those meatier questions are gonna start. So this section is titled, Why Do It? And again, similarly, we have a blurb that kind of orients us to the section and points back to the RFP. Here we have another one of those selection uh, questions. And again, depending on which one you select, it's gonna populate different answers in the second question. So when I have economic security and mobility, my options for this um, impact area are going to change and be centered around economic security and mobility. We'll just go ahead and click one of those. We have another text box here. Again, character counts are right here. Um, and we are going to be able to see that this one is actually a 3000 character count. So um, considerably larger than the ones on the first page that we saw. And then we have, please select the dimensions of equity of the program slash project most focused on or concerned about. And here again, you have a drop down menu that you can select one of the dimensions of equity. And there's also an other option. And so again, you can enter in your own text here to describe what other is. We're gonna hit that next button to navigate to the next page. And now we are in the what should be done section. Um, and this section actually is broken into subsections, which are what are the services? Why will it work? and who are the people served? So again, we have the title, what should be done, we have a blurb, and we have a sub um, header of what are the services. And again, there's more information in here for you to review. Um, and again, it's really supposed to be helpful um, to help orient you to these questions um, and to get an idea of what we are asking you for. Um, Below we have another question and another character count as well as a text box. Then we come to outcomes and accomplishments. And as I stated earlier, you know, we are going through the small application right now, um, but these questions are going to vary. There may be more questions in some of the larger tiers or the words may be a little bit different. So do be um, aware of that as you're working through um, this application or watching 
um, when you do this training, either now or the recording of it later. Um, but for this section, we have outcomes and accomplishments here. Again, some additional information um, for you to review, and then a space for you to input um, accomplishment number one, and then a space for you to input accomplishment number two. And something that I do want to point out here is that for accomplishments or outcomes, you only are mandated to put in one accomplishment. If you have more, um, we welcome them. Uh, we would love to see them, but it's really just one that is necessary um, for the application. Again, another question. Um, notice that this one is not mandatory. There's no asterisk um, with the text box. And now we move into the second subsection um, of this what should be done um, page. And that's why will it work? Uh, again, a blurb. And I do wanna point out as well that there is a, um, uh, this blue text here that is underlined and it says here, if you click on it, it's gonna actually open up an additional web page. If I can get up there. Um, you can see that it just gives you um, some more information uh, for you to review. Go ahead and close that out. Again, another text question. And then we move on to continuum of results and evidence. And here, similarly to the outcome, we do ask that folks write in at least one um, continuum of results and evidence um, or specific program or practice that falls on that, that range. Uh, and you'll notice that there are additional spaces for you to add more, but only one um, is mandated. Another text question, and we now get to hit that next button and keep going. All right, so now we are on the final section of the what should be done. Um, so who are the people served? Again, a blurb, um, an open text question. And now we move into some of the demographic questions. Um, and so these boxes, we really are looking for numbers here. Um, so you'll input your information. And now we have demographic broken up um, by, or I'm sorry, population broken up by demographics such as age. Um, so you'll just wanna read through these really uh, carefully. Um, for anybody between zero to five, you're gonna put a percentage, six to 18, the percentage, and so on and so forth. Um, and just remember that the total percentage for each of these sections should be around 100%. Um, then we have ethnicity, and we have quite a few listed out, um, but we also have an other box. Um, and again, others are not, you don't have to fill out the other, but if you have it, you can specify what your other is um, and include it here. And you're gonna see that that shows up in a lot of these um, demographics, such as gender, there's an other, primary language, there's an other, um, area also will be an other. So uh, just take time to read through it all. I know it can be overwhelming um, with so many text boxes, but again, think of it as that checklist um, and it'll just help you get through this application. So we'll hit next. Organizational capacity, again, we have that title, the blurb, and text boxes. Hopefully by this point, it's starting to look very familiar um, and you're getting the hang of it. And just as we're getting the hang of it, we have a new type of question. <laughs> so um, for this section, how much money is needed? Again, we have a blurb. Um, and then it's gonna ask you to complete and upload your budget form. And so since I selected that, I was going to be doing this as a single agency. If I click here to download the form, it's actually gonna download the single agency budget form for me. Again, that form is also lo located on the webpage. So you don't need to navigate all the way here to get to it. Um, you can definitely fill it out um, before you get to this section. And to upload a budget, you're just gonna select choose file. And you can select any, any type of thing. You can see I've got a bunch of different things here. Um, I'm a student right now, so I'm gonna put my course reflection for the class I just took. Um, but essentially you would want to put your budget. Um, and then you're gonna hit next and it's going to upload that file. And when we hit next again, it's just gonna take us to that non-collusion form, which is the last page. 
but I'm just quickly going to navigate back to our budget page so that you can see that I do have my upload here. Um, and if you do need to remove the file, you just click this little box and it automatically removes it. So I'll just go ahead and upload a document again. And again, any type of document, if you want to upload it as a PDF um, or as an Excel document um, or even as a Word document, whatever works best for your agency. Um, I will say that in larger tiers, um, like the large and targeted impact tier, we do ask for um, financial information as well. And so below uh, this area where you can upload your budget, there's also the opportunity to upload additional files um, around your financial statements. All right, so now we're on the final page of our application, the non-collusion. Um, similar to those text boxes, you can open um, this so that it's a little bit easier to read. You're gonna wanna read through that and check off the box. You're gonna enter your name and then enter the date. And so from here, you've got a couple of options. You can go backwards and go and review everything that you've just inputted. You can save and log out, um, which we showed at the beginning. Um, or if you're ready, you can go ahead and submit your application. Um, so when you hit that submit button, Another box is gonna pop up that says click here to submit your application. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. And now my application has been submitted. Um, so hopefully you woohoo a little bit, a little bit of a party if you're submitting. Um, and what's gonna happen is a couple of things. One is that you're gonna get taken to this page um, and you will be able to um, see a lot of different information like your submissions, and you'll also be able to start additional applications. But before we talk about those things, I also wanna show you that in your email, you're also going to receive um, an email that says that you've submitted and that you can review or update your application up until February 4th, 2022 until 5 p.m. You can also click a link here to log back in and update your application, but after that due date of February 4th, 2022, 5 p.m., changes cannot be made. So um, the email is super helpful. It's also um, just an acknowledgement that it has, has actually submitted. So if you come back over to the actual portal, there's a couple of things to point out. One is you can see your submissions. Um, I've been testing a lot, as you can see, um, and so I have a lot of different submissions. And if I wanted to see the one that we just worked on, I would click that little eyeball and it would take me into my submission. And so from here, you have a couple of different options. Um, you may love paper um, and you may want to print out your application and you can do so on this page. There's a little printer icon here. Um, you can also um, download it as a PDF and save it um, for your records, whatever makes the most sense for your agency. Uh, you can also edit your document from here. And so you would just hit this edit button in the right hand corner, and it's going to take you back into a place where you can actually add in additional information. Um, and what I recommend doing, there is a save and log out button at the top of the page right here, save and log out. But I recommend that if you're making any changes that you just continue to scroll all the way through the application, maybe giving it that one last little glance, making sure that everything looks perfect. And eventually when we get to that last page, we are going to see the little green submit box at the bottom. And so I do recommend that you go through and you hit that submit button and then okay it and it will resubmit it. And if we go back to my submissions, you'll see it's still here with the submit time of December 3rd. So some folks may be applying um, multiple applications. Um, and so to do that, there is a little paper icon here with a plus sign on the left-hand side of your screen. And that is where you're gonna be able to apply again. If you hit that button, it's gonna take you right back into where we were before, um, where you showed up on that first summary and contact information page. 
I do want to note that once you start a new application, you will need to submit it to get back to this page, um, which I know can be a little frustrating. Um, but as you just saw, you can come back and um, edit your submissions. And so if that's um, going to be helpful for you to submit something, even maybe it's not completely you know, done so that you can get back to an old application, that's OK. Just remember to go back and change anything in that submission. And then for additional help, um, here you have a little um, life preserver down on the bottom left, and that's where you can request support from reviewer. Um, so we will not get, um, the city or the county will not get these tickets that you submit here, but reviewer themselves will, and they'll be able to help with anything um, that is, you know, going wonky in your system. So you can always submit a ticket to reviewer. Um, additionally, you can also submit a um, question to us through that core funding at santacruzcounty.us email address. Um, and there's additional information if email is not the best way for you to reach out to us, including a phone number, and that's located in the RFP. Um, and before I stop sharing my screen, I'm just going to show you if you need to log out um, on this page, there is a little button down here that you can log yourself out. I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing. So I want to distinguish um, the Nicole's uh, technical assistance role. They have been attending these trainings and have kind of the same general understanding that you all probably have from attending them. Um, and so they will be able to help um, slightly during the trainings and technical assistance that they offer. But essentially, they will be referring people back to the recordings of the trainings, as well as the core funding at santacruzcounty.us email address if you have any additional um, questions that, that they don't have the answers to. Um, so I think with that, I will go ahead and open it up to questions. Let me just stop my sharing. Um, any questions that are coming up for folks right off the bat? And feel free to take some time. I know that's a lot of information to digest um, and questions may kind of show up um, along the way. Is there a way to um, have those questions available before we like uh, before we uh, go onto the dashboard kind of thing? Yeah, that's a great question. So um, if you, I'll, I'll share my screen and we can walk through how to get there real quick. So in order to see those questions before you even get into the portal, you'll want to go to HSD Santa Cruz, um, Santa Cruz's webpage, and you'll navigate to the core investments funding opportunities. And down um, here underneath, how do I apply? There are these optional application forms. And so let's just go ahead and download the small one and open it up and we can kind of see what it looks like. So you'll notice it's pretty similar to the um, to the reviewer portal, and it shows all of the questions. It's set up similarly where you can um, choose items or click or tap here to enter text. Um, and you'll be able to see all of the questions that are asked of the small tier in one place. And it does include the character limit, which does include spaces. And then if you need any support in trying to figure out, well, how do I actually get the character limit? There are some directions up here at the top um, of how to navigate and find character counts within Word documents as well. So is that is that what you're asking for, Adriana? Yeah, thank you. Okay. Perfect. No, thank you. I'm glad, glad we could walk that through. Um, Alex, I'm sorry, could where, so I'm going back and forth between my desktop and laptop and I'm on the website and I'm still not sure where is the, the, um, the application review piece that you just, you just showed it and then I couldn't find it as you were doing. Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's go back. Thank you. <laughs> so if you're on probably when you just first click onto the site, you're, you're up here at the top of the page and you're gonna navigate down 
to how do I apply. And that's where this button here that says here is how you would get to the portal. Um, it says to complete your application online. The application portal is available here. There's those budget forms that are also available in a reviewer um, for single agency and collaborative budget worksheets. And then the optional application form that we just pulled up um, for small, medium, large, and targeted impact application. Thank you. Yes, I also love using my um, find feature on uh, like web pages. So that's also a great resource because um, I'm constantly searching for things and I'm like, I swear I saw it and I have just scrolled by it like a hundred times and <laughs> can't see it. So I do have yeah. one other question if it's okay. Yeah, of course. Um, uh, so none of us are grant writers. None of us have any experience being board of directors in any way whatsoever. We were just like, hey, let's start a family center. I mean, I've been building it for a lot of years, but mm -hmm. the pandemic just really pushed it into fruition. Um, how do I know what tier we are? <laughs> Is that just like based on the need, the requested need or... Yeah, Nicole, do you have any um, specific kind of feedback for tier? Um, I think that's a, a little bit outside of the scope of the reviewer training, but I, I think the thing that I would recommend is just to review the RFP and um, the parameters of kind of what tiers funding amount um, you're going to be looking for. But that's really like the biggest distinction between the tiers um, that I can think of. But um, Nicole, anything else for applicants who are unsure what tier they may or should apply for? Um, I would definitely emphasize or reiterate what you just said, Alex, that the tiers are based on the amounts that you'll be requesting. And so if you feel like, well, we're just getting started and like, if you have a really clear idea of what your funding needs are, that might be a really easy decision then, oh, we fit in this tier. If you're not sure, cause you also want to balance like requesting something and proposing activities and services and outcomes that will be realistic for you to implement. You might want to do some of that program planning first to really figure out, okay, what, what do we think we could implement? What do we think we could measure in terms of results and outcomes? What feels realistic to do and how much would that cost and what tier does that fall into in terms of a proposal? So kind of depending on where, um, how much you feel like you've already thought through or have an idea? Yeah, no, I get you. I, 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 I think I already knew the answer and I just wanted to, I guess I needed some confirmation, yeah. but yeah, we, we, we have an idea. Thank you. And then um, on that same page, the HSD website that Alex was reviewing, if you scroll down a little bit further, you'll see the list of all of the training sessions that we've held so far. Um, the ones that have already passed, we have the recordings available on YouTube. And so if there's something where, again, if there's a piece of your planning process that you're not quite sure, or you're seeing something in the RFP, you're not sure what it means, like <laughs> core results menu, core continuum. We've done some trainings on those different concepts and tools. And so that might be helpful to look at some of those recordings too to, to help you in your planning process. Okay, I appreciate that, thank you. Awesome questions. Do we have any other questions or thoughts that are coming up that we should review? Uh, yes, hi, I'm John, yeah. I'm calling in from Santa Cruz Community Ventures. Um, we would like to submit two applications and I think we're supposed to submit one in order to get to the second, is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. So you can only have one application going at a time. And then once you submit that first application, you'll be able to start the second application. And um, we were just looking at those optional application forms. So if you are applying to two, then you can use those optional application forms to start answering the questions for um, both of your applications um, without having to go through a reviewer and submit everything. Um, so that's, that's one resource for folks who are submitting to applications. Okay, and when we click the submit button, that is an official submission to you guys, right? 
It is an official submission, but you can go back and edit it um, as long as it's before the February 4th, 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time deadline. So we're not going to be looking um, at, at those as final submissions until after that deadline. Um, so you will be okay. able to go back and edit. So, I mean, technically you could just do exactly what I did today and just kind of have test, test, test in all of the little boxes, submit, and then be able to start your second application. Um, if you wanted to see like how the questions were going to be laid out in reviewer, um, it's just then a question of like, will you really remember to go back and make sure that all of those test boxes then reflect the information that you want to share with us. So, um, but I think whatever at your discretion of what works best for you and your team for sure. Right, because there may be bits and pieces where there's, I don't know if there's any uploads, but we want to work on some online and we wouldn't have to work on other pieces online. Um, so then when it comes to you know, our final edits, whatever is in that application by deadline, that's it, right? That's correct. Yes. As okay. long as you have submitted it. If you just saved right. and logged out and you never submitted your application, it doesn't count as a submitted application. But if you've submitted it and you've made edits and then you've resubmitted it, um, then those ones are the ones that will be um, taken in. Is there a resubmission process or is it just what it, we make our edits and we just leave it? then it's, it's just captured that way, right? Yeah, so when you hit the edit button, you're gonna wanna then navigate to the very last page and hit the submit button. Um, okay, got it. Mm -hmm. So it's like a, almost like a faux submit until <laughs> when you're done, then it's real submit. Exactly. Got it. Okay, yeah. now that's helpful. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm, of course. Alex, I have a quick question for you. Um, you walked us through the upload process for the budget document. Are there any other file uploads throughout the application? I'm just thinking about like other attachments that might be needed or anything like that. Yeah, so for small and medium, I believe that is it. Um, and then I believe for uh, large and targeted impact that we do ask for financial statements. So that will be the other place where you will be able to upload documents. Okay, but no like letters of endorsement or, you know. I don't, I don't know. believe I think so. so. Okay. I don't Thank believe you. so. I remember, I think it's optional, like the letters, like if you have partners, I think yeah, I might remember in that right, Alex, that there's an option for targeted impact grants. That, uh, maybe that's what it was. Cause I was like, I'm pretty sure it's not for, I was thinking if it was for collaborative agencies, but I think you're right for targeted impact proposals, that there is a, a place for those letters of endorsement or any other kind of um, materials that would help um, with um, showing collaboration. Thanks, Nicole. I have one quick question. This is Pamela uh, Peterson from Senior Network Services. And that has to do with, I know this is very basic, but uh, does reviewer take uh, cut and paste so we can mock up the, uh, the Word document and then cut and paste because not all the reviewer software seems to do that? I do believe so. I guess I've never tried it, but maybe we can try it right now as a group. Um, okay. <laughs> I just want to make sure. <laughs> No, it's a valid question. And like, that's actually a really great question. Yeah, because I've run into the same frustration for sure. Yeah. Okay. So let's, we're going to log back in. Um, we're going to go to my submissions. We're going to edit. And then um, I guess I just need to take some random text from somewhere else. Yep, it copies and pastes over. Very good. I'm glad we could figure that out together. And now I, I know that for future reference as well. Awesome. Any other questions that have popped up while we've been going through some of these? I just have one more question is that uh, if we are an agency that's gonna submit multiple applications, uh, does the agency information, is that pre-populated or do we start that over each time? 
If you're applying from the same, um, uh, like a, a submission login information, it mm -hmm. should pre-populate over most of that information. And I believe that then you can um, edit the information that you would like to if you need to. Um, but it should copy over a lot of that contact information. So hopefully that makes it a little bit easier for applicants so they don't have to, I don't know how many times I've had to input an <laughs> address for an agency. Um, <laughs> so yes. Okay, that's great. But if we decide to have multiple people work on applications with different logins, then we would uh, be obviously entering them in because the system will look at them as if they're, they're separate agencies because they're different logins. Exactly. Yeah. So some agencies may decide that they want to have um, a different login for different applications because it just makes sense for the way that their agency operates. And if that's the case, then yes, that summary information isn't going to populate back over from um, one application to the next because the login okay. information is different. Excellent. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. I, I just one more. I, I have a feeling I'm going to find this answer like in the description somewhere. So <laughs> tell me if I, this is not the place to ask this, but why would somebody have multiple applications for this same grant? Are we talking two different things? Is this like totally a newbie type of question? I'm sorry. No, no, that's fine. Um, so uh, I, I think in the realm of the RFP, um, applicants uh, are able to apply to different tiers, um, but there are certain parameters that the RFP, um, applicants are able to apply to multiple tiers, um, but they have to meet certain requirements based off of like their programs and projects. And that's all underneath. Oh, it would be really impressive if I got this right. I think it's under section 3.1 application parameters. Um, of the RFP, but I could be misquoting that. Um, but I would just recommend going back through and reading that um, and it'll uh, kind of show like if you had different types of programs or projects and it's defined what a program or project is, um, then you could apply for the different tiers. Okay, thank you for taking that time. I figured I would have found it somewhere in there, but thank you. Any other questions about reviewer? All right. Well, One suggestion is um, if you haven't already, it sounds like some of you have already created your reviewer accounts and maybe have started putting some things in. If you haven't yet, um, probably a good idea to do that soon and start testing it out. Like we in the first training, there was someone who mentioned that she had created her account, but then when she tried to log in, it wasn't letting her log in. So like get all that kind of testing and glitches out of the way now <laughs> so that you don't find that you're in that last week of the uh, application period and then finding all, you know, discovering all the issues then. Yeah, I'm glad you said that because that's exactly what's happening to me. And I was just wondering is where would we go for tech support if they're, um, if that's happening, because that's exactly what's happening to me. Yeah, so I would say that if you're having any tech support, just email us at core funding, um, and I'll put it back into the email or the, the chat again. Um, but then we'll be able to get you connected with uh, somebody at Reviewer if it's something that we can't help you troubleshoot with. Um, okay, but email cool. is the best way to do that. Thank you. Great, well, we'll stay on for a bit um, in case anybody has lingering questions. Um, although, Peggy, I just saw you unmute. Do you have a question? No, I was just gonna say thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we it was do. helpful, thank you. I believe, Nicole, we have a survey um, that will populate onto folks' screens just to get some feedback um, on the, the training if folks don't mind filling that out. Um, and then, yeah, thank you so much for attending. and. Uh, if you have any questions, that core funding at Santa Cruz County email address is the best way to reach us. Um, and uh, I hope uh, you all have a fun time learning reviewer. <laughs> Thanks.